Hello, this is the Watchdog, and welcome back to Fun with Watches. If watches weren't fun, you'd only need one. Today, we're going to review the Swish SW0193G. Let's start with the wrist check. I'm wearing this Philita 500 meter homage to Omega Ultra Deep. And Greg was wearing my Pagani Design PD1645 homage to Rogue State Just. I told Grego that I was reviewing another Swish today. He said, you Swish, you had a Rolex. All right, let's take a look at the watch. It comes in this box, says Swish on the box. And then of course we have the unsigned warranty card instructions and a hang tag in case you think it's a fake Swish. And here's the watch. Swish is yet another AliExpress brand making very affordable homage watches. This Daytona homage looks like a white gold Oyster Flex model, but there is no gold in it. But if you scratch enough of the chrome plating, you will see the gold-like color of the zinc alloy case. The Oyster Flex Daytona have a different, more vintage, subtle look than the metal bracelet versions. And this Podagar seems to capture that vibe. I've reviewed quite a few of these very affordable Daytona homages with a small second chronograph hand. This one doesn't really stand out, but it's fun and I've enjoyed wearing it. If you don't like the chrome plated Panda, there is also a reverse Panda. There is also a rose gold option in both colorways. If you don't like a black strap, then buy another watch because even though they have a blue, green, red, and orange strap option, they look horrible and ruin the whole gold Daytona on Oyster Flex vibe. I am normally all about fun colors, but they just don't work with these watch heads. The watch is 39.5 millimeters at the bezel, 47.8 millimeters lug to lug, 11.9 millimeters thick, has a 20 millimeter lug width, and weighs 71 grams on the supply silicone strap. We have the ceramic tachymeter bezel. And all the writing on it is not engraved. It's just printed on top. So I imagine they will eventually wear off. Then we have the dial. I like the dial. I think that they did a good job with the dial. It's got a nice sunburst effect. And it has a gray color instead of white. So it really matches the white gold option of the Rolex. Then we have the Swish name and logo printed on top. And then if you look really closely, uh, I think they misspelled chronograph. Yeah, I don't know if you can see it or not, but there's no A in chronograph. And then it says sport in red. Then the, we have the applied indices and the loomed hands. And no loom on the running second hand. And no loom on the subdial hands. And then we have a date at the 430. A real Daytona doesn't have a date at the 430. So some people complain when a homage does. I I just assume have the date because at least it's useful. And of course there's no Cyclops. Then the subdials, we have a 24 hour indicator on the right. We have the chronograph second hand on the bottom, and then we have the chronograph minute counter on the left. Of course, this being a chronograph, you just click the top button and it'll start. And click the button again to stop it. And the reset is a fast rewind and not an instant snapback. The crown is unsigned push-pull. The crown action is actually pretty good. It's not all loose. And when you go to set it, when you go to set it, you can get a minute hand jump. But if you hold it when you push it in, it will go in just fine. You just have to hold the crown. We have a flat mineral glass crystal that barely sticks up above the bezel. 
it does a good job. Uh, there's no reflection or anything. And then we have the case. The ad says solid stainless steel, but if you look at it, you can tell it's a chrome plated alloy. There's no way this is steel. See how it's shiny everywhere and just a different color than the steel case back. Then we have the case back. It says stainless steel swish quartz movement, three ATM water resistant. So yes, you only get three ATM. And oh yeah, these uh, screw down pushers are not screwed down at all. These uh, knurl this knurling is just for show. So it looks like the real Daytona that really does have screw down pushers. And there are no uh, fake screw down for the case back. It It is a press on and there's the little notch for the tool. And I didn't bother taking the case back off to look at the movement. It's cheap, it's quartz, and it has a small second current graph. That's all you really need to know. The strap is silicone. It's It's a pretty light silicone. It's pretty mushy. It's not the best quality silicone in the world. It does feel like cheap silicone, nice and slick. Uh, and these end links are fake. They're part of the case. They're not real end links. But they, they make it look like you have end links. And all, honestly, Pagani Design does it too on their much more expensive uh, gold uh, Daytona homages. Then we have two keepers, and they're both floating. There are no nibs to keep the first one in place. And then we have the buckle. The buckle's good. It's nice and thick and sturdy. Uh, the prong's not all floppy. Uh, one word of warning, though. If you get the rose gold one, I'm pretty sure if you look at the ad, uh, you get a chrome buckle and not a gold buckle. So if you want your hardware to match, I, I would not recommend the rose gold one. But it has this pattern here for sweat. Here's the watch on my seven and a half inch wrist. It looks nice, wears nice. It's comfortable, it's light. And I have four notches in both directions. So you can wear this if you have a big wrist or you can wear this if you have a small wrist. Here on the loom room, I don't like wearing metal bracelet watches to bed, but since this has a silicone strap, I did. And when I woke up in the middle of the night, I couldn't see anything. So I am not expecting much for this test. As we speed up the time, the indices fade almost immediately. The hands are a little bit better, but not much. This is not good loom, nor even so-so. What do I like about this watch? Well, it's not a bad looking watch for the money. It really has that Rolex Daytona Oyster Flex vibe to it. It's very comfortable to wear, light, and fits nice. And I like the dial. I think they did a good job. Has a nice sunburst. What are my grapes and groans? Small second chronograph. I'm always going to complain about that on any chronograph I review. Uh, it has fake screw down pushers. This knurling doesn't do anything. And the loom is just plain lousy. Do I recommend this watch? Sure. It is not a great watch, but it is a fun watch and worth the 20 something dollars I paid for it. All the fun of a gold Oyster Flex Daytona with none of that annoying outrageous price tag. Well, thank you for watching my review of the Swish SW0193G, and I will be back with another review. Be sure to like and subscribe to my channel. Bye.